I learned anything from the last video, it's that you guys seem to think that that is a green screen. Guys, it's not a green screen. That's really outside. Gaming laptops. This is one of those topics that even bringing it up makes some of the highest end enthusiasts in the community cringe because often they're considered to be too heavy, too hot, and a terrible value. Now, I would normally agree with that. In fact, I wasn't even doing laptop reviews for the first four years of my channel. I felt that there was no point. And I was with you guys when I said that they were too expensive for what you get, but that's all changed. Now let's talk real quick about gaming laptops and who might actually want one. Maybe we should start with what is a gaming laptop? Well, typically gaming laptops just have discrete graphics. It's the only thing that really makes them different. Usually they have a little bit faster CPUs, maybe a little bit of overclocking available to them, but usually they're pretty locked down and very limited. Now that's where this comes in. This is MSI's new flagship, the GT73 VR Titan. I've been using it now for about four months. I told the company that I was gonna be doing some extensive testing on this in all sorts of environments, including traveling, and I wanted to get a real hands-on experience with this without just playing around with it and then saying, oh, yeah, this is a gaming laptop and this is how it performs. I actually rendered all of my CES videos on this guy. I rendered my video from San Francisco on this guy. And so far, since I've been here in the office, the only computer I've been using is this guy. Now, the only person I could really see wanting this level of power in a laptop would be the traveling power user. Now, that's what I used to do for my company. When, for almost 10 years, I worked in IT. I traveled to our various satellite offices and our customers and clients that we service, sometimes on the road up to three weeks at a time. When I had a little HP ProBook that had you know, integrated graphics, I could barely even play a game like League of Legends. And trust me when I say that three weeks in a hotel with no gaming and nothing to do made for a very depressing trip. So obviously something like this would have been welcome. But that was also back in the mid to late 2000s and there wasn't that much power to actually be had in a notebook. But that's all changed due to the efficiency of GPUs and CPUs today. Now this unit right here is specifically featuring the 6820HK. It is an unlocked overclockable chip. We'll talk about that in a second. But it also has a full-blown GTX 1080 chip in here, giving you an extremely good gaming experience. It's not a 1080M or some sort of an M version of the chip, which you know usually has less CUDA cores and less power. This is the same exact thing you would get if you bought like a Founders Edition card. And yes, it is also overclockable. Now, even though we've seen some great efficiency improvements on the CPU and GPU, cooling is still something that's very important. And that's what MSI has definitely thought out on this particular unit right here. The entire bottom is nothing but one big giant vent. It's got completely open intake on the bottom and it's got four exhaust ports, one on each side and two on the back. Now, speaking of the back, it's got a very cool look. That's something that a lot of people tend to not like about gaming laptops is they tend to be very over the top and very gaudy. And this one's kind of on the edge of that, depending on what your taste may be. But I think it has kind of a neat, like sort of a Lamborghini Aventador look to the back of it. That, that's obviously gonna be subjective to taste, but I think MSI kept it pretty toned down compared to some gaming laptops that are out there. MSI also offers full tailoring of these so that you can outfit them to kind of meet your needs and bring the price down in some areas. Like for instance, this is available in a 4K. I opted for the 1080p 120 hertz panel because with the 1080, it's still not enough power to do 4K gaming and a 17 inch screen with a 4K display, in my opinion, is just not very smart. So the 1080p 120 hertz was perfect, especially for gaming. And the 1080 has no problems keeping up with high frame rates and very smooth G-Sync 120 hertz, because this is, this is also a G-Sync panel. It also has an SSD RAID set up in here, as well as an SSD main drive. So we are getting extremely fast performance on this thing. But if you don't want all that, of course, you don't have to configure it that far up. Now it also features the Steel Series keyboard in here. So it's got LED lighting. You can configure them by zones or individual lights, however you want to do it. Uh, there's a lot of customization here. Now let's talk about overclocking because that was something that was important to me, especially since I'm doing my rendering on this. Now this is a full four core, eight thread, 6820HK, like I said, that I currently have clocked to 4.1 gigahertz. How big of an overclock is that? Well, this chip actually ships out of the box at 2.7 gigahertz. Now it can get a little bit noisy if you're doing things like rendering and whatnot, but you can also go into the MSI software, the Dragon app, and actually set up fan profiles with the lighting profiles and all sorts of screen customizations, anti-blue filters and stuff like that. So really you're getting the same type of experience you would on a desktop, 
in a very much more portable form factor. The GTX 1080 is also overclockable on this thing, so you have complete overclocking of CPU and GPU, but of course you have to keep in mind that if you do that, you are going to definitely ramp up the heat that's in this thing, which you're gonna to wanna to keep it cool with an aggressive fan profile, which means noise. In fact, it even has a button on here, like a turbo button for the fan. So if you're doing something that's really strenuous and you just wanna say, hey, fans go as fast as you can, well, you can push that. But keep in mind, you might make your neighbors a little upset. It kind of looks like a jet in the back. Sounds like one too. Now I was able to get about an hour of gaming time on this with it on the high performance profile, which means no slowing down of CPU and GPU and dimming of the screen to try and save battery life. Uh, but a solid hour with this much hardware is actually not that bad. The downside though is check out this power brick. Yeah, this thing right here is about the size of some laptops altogether. It definitely weighs uh, a few pounds as well, so that's something to keep in mind. Yeah. Now the cool thing about this having a full-size GTX 1080 GPU in there is that pretty much any game I play with the 120 uh, hertz 1080p panel is pretty much locked at 120 FPS. The G-Sync in there does a great job of keeping the frames really smooth. I play games like Grand Theft Auto V, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Diablo, of course Diablo is not very demanding on games, but any game I threw at this, it had no problem whatsoever just churning out the FPS and giving me a very, usable experience, oh, I say usable, man, it was a damn good experience, 120 FPS locked on most games, but even a game like uh, Grand Theft Auto V, like I said, a lot of CPU usage in that game has no problem keeping up whatsoever. I definitely wouldn't recommend though putting this on your, your lap if you still value maybe having kids in the future. It gets a little hot at times. Now there's one thing I wanna talk about real quick that you should probably keep in mind on a laptop this size, and the size of the vents right here in the back of the laptop. They're big enough for small objects to kind of work their way in there if you have any sort of debris or anything in your backpack. See if you can hear it. Ah, you hear, oh, one just fell out. Okay, that's good. In my backpack, I left one of those little, I didn't see it in the bottom of those little silicon packs that are designed to kind of like, I guess, absorb moisture or whatever they're there for when they're in shipping. It broke open and then all those little pellets went in here. Thankfully they're inert and they're not like uh, any sort of Conductive piece of stuff, but I've already taken the bottom off this thing and put it back together and then I traveled and to the airport in San Francisco and I came home and there was more rattling. I was like, what the heck? And I finally figured it out. So keep your backpacks clean. Small little objects can work their way in there, which is not good. So anyway, guys, tell me what you think about gaming laptops in general. I know they're typically a love it or hate it type of product. And typically the only people I find that actually appreciate them or understand their purpose are people like me who are power users who travel and want the power to go with them at the sacrifice of weight, noise, and a little bit of extra heat. This guy right here is definitely giving you desktop performance and something that can fit in your backpack, which I think everyone should appreciate, but it's not cheap. I mean, these can go up to, well, almost endless, but this one right here is about $3,200. It's not cheap. Now in the four months that I've been using this, I have not experienced any sort of weird issues uh, with the hardware itself. I've really put this thing through the paces. I overclocked it on day one. It's been running a full speed overclock nonstop. It's sitting here right now at the desktop at 4.05 gigahertz. Uh, it's actually set for 4.1, but like I said, because of B-clock adjustments, it goes down slightly. If you're a power user, you know what that means. But with the SSD RAID array and 64 gigabytes of DDR4 in this laptop, I, I have to say that I am absolutely in love with the performance of this thing. Now, that's exactly what I requested from MSI. I, need, I said, I need something that I can play my games on in my, you know, PCMR, high refresh rate, high FPS. You know, I can't go down to 60 anymore because I'm a panel snob now. And I need something that can also meet my needs with rendering. And I rendered a 50 megabit 4K video, the tour that you guys saw of this 11 minute video in just under 20 minutes. That's not bad at all for a laptop, that's fantastic. All right guys, time to go. Thanks for watching today's video. I hope you've uh, learned something about some gaming laptops and at least seen how far we've come in even just the last couple of years in terms of small form factor computing power. So I'm gonna go now. Why don't you guys hit that like button if you enjoyed today's video. Give me some more topic ideas you think I should cover. And uh, as always, I'll see you in the next one.